awesome divers out there, welcome to Scuba Diver Magazine, your favourite place for the latest scuba diving news and gear reviews. Today we're going back to basics and we're breaking down snorkels, a very fundamental piece of equipment. Uh, but if you are new to scuba diving or snorkeling, then you'll be faced with many, many designs of snorkels out there. And some can be better for certain types of diver and some can hinder a certain type of diver. Now there are plenty of choices on today's sponsor scuba.com who have a huge website full of the latest snorkels and scuba diving equipment, uh, as well as two dive centers, uh, one on each side of the US. You can check them out by visiting scuba.com. Uh, but first, we need to learn a little something about snorkels. So this is the most fundamental type of snorkel. Uh, we call this a J snorkel. Uh, up at the top, of the snorkel we have the opening where the air goes in that's simply just called the top of the snorkel um, down from that you have a slight bend to um, so that the top of the snorkel wraps around your head they can sometimes be straight but it's nice if it wraps around so it's a bit more hydrodynamic you then have some way of attaching your snorkel to your mask in the form of a clip. Uh, in this case, it's a figure of eight that attaches around the snorkel. Then you have a lower bend below that to wrap the lower section of the snorkel around your jaw so the mouthpiece can sit in your mouth. A trap just below your mouthpiece, which is the very lowest part of the snorkel. And that's where any water that finds its way inside of the snorkel will collect at the lowest point in that trap, but it will keep the airway clear. And finally you have the mouthpiece, the bit that actually goes in your mouth. Starting at the top of the snorkel, uh, there are three basic types. Uh, you have ones like this one, where the tube just stops and it's just a, an open tube. Uh, these are obviously the cheapest because they're the easiest to make. And you do need a certain amount of airway control, choosing when you're inhaling and where you're inhaling it from. If there's any water around your mouth, you need to be comfortable with that. Any splash of water from a wave, or if you duck your head just a little bit too deep, the water is going to find its way inside of the snorkel. So if you don't like water around your mouth, this is not the style for you. If you are more comfortable in the water, then these have the fewest failure points and they're quite multifunctional as well. I'll talk about that a little bit later. Deflector tops, like this one, they have some kind of shielding that obscures the opening of the snorkel. So if a wave splashes over the top of the snorkel, some water may find its way through, but most of it is likely to be deflected away from that airway opening. Again, very few failure points, but it just protects that airway a little bit more than a simple open top. If you're really not a fan of water in and around your mouth, then you can find a dry top snorkel. So the name is a little exaggerated because you can get some water in. However, you have a pretty comprehensive deflector to help reduce water splashes from finding its way in. But you also have a small float built into the top of the snorkel on a hinge that floats up and actually blocks the opening of the snorkel if it ever gets submerged underwater. So if you dive under the water a lot, these can be quite nice because the entire snorkel doesn't fill up with water and then you have to clear it once you get back to the surface. Once you get back to the surface with a dry snorkel, most of it is just full of air and you can continue to breathe and you don't need to clear it. And if you're swimming in choppy waters, it helps to prevent water from filling up that snorkel. If you dive under the water a lot, then these can be quite nice because the snorkel itself doesn't fill up with water as soon as you go under. And that way, once you get back up to the surface, it's full of air so you can just continue to breathe. You don't need to clear it. And if you're in choppy waters, it helps to prevent water again from filling up the snorkel, but do be prepared for the snorkel to close whilst you're inhaling, like halfway through a breath in rougher waters and stop you from inhaling. It's a weird sensation, but that can happen. They can also have a weird sensation if they close whilst you're inhaling and you continue to inhale. Uh, in that you can basically suck and hold that seal in place whilst you're inhaling so you won't be able to breathe even if you do come back up above the water. Uh, so you need to 
exhale just a little bit, just to push that seal open and then you can continue to breathe. The main body of the snorkel is usually fairly similar across different designs. Sometimes it's different colors, but that doesn't matter so much. Uh, it's more the, uh, the shape, because you can find some variances. Most snorkels are round, like just a perfect circle in cross section, but you can find some like this one, which are a slight oval, which just bring the snorkel a little bit closer to your head to help reduce drag a little bit in the water. Some snorkels actually have a small float like this one, built into them so that if you do accidentally drop it in the water then you can find it floating on the surface now it'll definitely float itself if you have your mask still attached onto the snorkel and you drop them both connected into the water it may not be that floaty um, but a little is better than nothing then it comes down to flexibility uh, a rigid snorkel like this one, um, they do have their benefits in that it always keeps that airway open. There's no way to for it to like fold over, um, but they can get a little bit waggly sometimes in the water if there's strong current. Semi-flexible ones as well. Um, it's quite nice to have a little bit of flex. Um, flexible bodies are nice because they allow that little bit of bend and flex instead of breaking. Um, but there are degrees of flexibility. Um, some are completely flexible. Uh, some are, I mean, this one I'd call like moderately flexible because whilst it does bend, it always snaps back to its original shape. A small amount of bend is nice, but it needs to return to that shape to keep that airway open. We do have folding snorkels that completely curl up completely into themselves and fit in a pocket. They're more convenient if you don't want to use it all of the time, but you do want it on you. Uh, you just need to make sure that when you do open it up, that it does unfurl completely and the airway isn't constricted. Because if it is folded up for a good length of time, sometimes they do just hold themselves closed. Halfway down the body of the snorkel, you'll usually find a clip. So some way of attaching the snorkel to your mask. They range from something like this, which is just a basic hook that just hooks over the mask strap to these fully articulated removable clips um, with slides and hinges and things. Uh, so this, as I said earlier, is called a figure of eight. Uh, they're probably the most universal uh, because it's just a very simple piece of rubber and they just slide over the snorkel like this and they can be a touch fiddly um, because you either have to slide both loops over the snorkel with the mask in place or you have to re-thread the mask strap through that and then through the buckles of your mask so they're, they're good and universal but can be a little bit fiddly um, some articulated clips uh, are fixed onto the snorkel. You can slide them up and down and they often have a bit of a, a hinge so the snorkel can angle as you need it to. Um, and some snorkels will actually have a removable clip where you can remove this section and then leave that part attached to your mask and then just attach the snorkel when you want to use it. Um, otherwise, if you have that on your mask all the time, they can be a little bit cumbersome to, to pack together. Your mask has its own little box and your snorkel isn't gonna fit inside of that. Below the clip, you have a lower bend. So the lower bend can be fixed like this one. So it's just a fixed angle. Uh, these are best for pure snorkeling if you're only going snorkeling. If you use them whilst you're scuba diving, then they can kind of get in the way of your regulator. And if it's not a perfect fit, then you might feel some kind of pull on the mouthpiece trying to hold it in place because it's that fixed angle. A softer lower bend like this one you see this corrugated section here that can let the mouthpiece sit wherever is comfortable and if you are scuba diving and you let go of it to switch to your regulator it just drops the mouthpiece away to give your second stage a bit of space so if you do plan to go scuba diving with a snorkel then you want that flexible section down here for a bit of bend and flex
The lowest part of a snorkel is usually a little bit oversized, this section here, so that any water that does find its way into the snorkel settles at the very lowest point. And even if there's a fair amount of water inside, as long as you don't gasp the air in, if you just breathe gently, then you can actually breathe past that water. You can still breathe even though there is water inside of your snorkel. A lot of snorkels today will have a small one-way valve at the bottom of these traps so that any water that does get caught in the trap will be pushed out of the bottom of the snorkel each time you exhale firmly. Without that lower purge valve, you need to exhale and blast any water all the way up out of the snorkel to be able to clear it. Whereas if you do have that valve, you just exhale and any water that's around that just gets pushed straight out of the bottom. It's a lot easier. The mouthpiece itself uh, is usually fairly standard. Uh, the, the whole thing goes in your mouth and you bite down on these two side bits. You don't need to uh, bite down hard. Uh, if you bite the mouthpiece too hard, uh, you literally chew through it. It's just soft silicone. Uh, and you just need to replace that tune out mouthpiece. Uh, if it's a, a fixed mouthpiece, you have to replace the entire snorkel. If it's one like this, you can actually change just the mouthpiece. Um, but most mouthpieces will just sit nicely in your mouth without needing to properly bite down on it. Uh, your lips can actually hold onto it. The newest snorkel design to hit the market is a full face snorkel. Uh, I don't actually have one with me. Um, these have several benefits, but it is very important that you understand just how dangerous they can be if you don't use them properly. Full face snorkels are an all-in-one mask that covers your face and lets you breathe through your nose and your mouth. It's very hard for water to find its way in and snorkelers who really don't like water anywhere around their face tend to prefer this style of snorkel because they do have a very comprehensive seal all the way around. I do need to talk about the dangers, however. Every single snorkel extends your dead air space. The dead air space is simply the volume of exhaled gas that doesn't leave your trachea completely when you finish exhaling. This gas inside of this dead air space has a little less oxygen and a little bit more carbon dioxide compared to fresh air. When you breathe normally, it's not that much of an issue because on your next lung full of fresh air, it just dilutes it so it's not that much of an issue. But when you add extra volume onto that, the volume of the snorkel, or worse, a full face snorkel, because that's got much larger volume, then you need to take good proper lungfuls of fresh air. No shallow breathing, because you want to clear out as much of that dead air space as possible. Because full face snorkels are such a new concept, there isn't really any standardized testing or requirements for them to go to market. And we have seen too many cheap designs on the market now. So it's very important that you buy one from a reputable brand. And even when you do use it properly to take big breaths and flush out as much of that dead air space as possible and get some nice fresh air in your lungs. The same with regular snorkels, you do need to breathe properly. You can't breathe too shallow with a regular snorkel, but we have seen more issues with full face designs. The best way to find a better design is to look at the brand itself. If they have a decent website and some kind of accountability, then there's a higher chance that they'll produce a decent product. There are too many brands out there that just make this product and they don't even have a website or any kind of way of tracking them down or getting in contact with them. Uh, so those kind of brands are best left alone. When you do get your full face snorkel. Also look for large airflow openings. I mean, if you think about the airflow on one of these snorkels, that's quite large, but on some of the full face snorkel designs, I've seen very, very small openings. So you want big airways coming in and going out and proper one way valves so that you know that your exhaled gas is being kept separate from your inhaled air. But even so, always be careful with full face snorkels big deep breaths and take a break every so often, probably every like five to 10 minutes. Just take it off, get some fresh air, and then you can continue. If you ever feel 
anything off, anything weird about yourself, mask comes off, catch your breath, get to safety. I know it can sound scary, but it is important that new snorkelers know that they need to breathe properly. Uh, even with a conventional snorkel, bit, but especially with a full face snorkel. Personally, I use a basic J type snorkel. Uh, I don't wear one on my mask when I go scuba diving because uh, they have a very shallow operating depth and my regulator will always be better when I need to breathe, even on the surface. But when I want to go snorkeling, I'm fairly confident in the water and my airway control is pretty good. And if a snorkel has lots of valves and deflectors and things, then you can't use it for in-water rescue breaths. Uh, instead of having to climb up out of the water to do in-water rescue breaths, uh, you can just fit the mouthpiece in the, uh, in the victim and then breathe into the tube. Whereas if you have all of these kind of valves and stuff, you can't do those kind of uh, rescue breaths. So personally, I just prefer a, a simple one. Uh, I like a little bit of flex, but not too much in my snorkel. Uh, a little bit of flex is good for packing as well. It's a bit more convenient. And if it does like bend in transit, then uh, it doesn't break. It's just a nice benefit there. Color is very much up to you. Um, legislation in certain areas has laxed recently, so snorkels don't always require a bright topper. It used to uh, to have like a, a bright orange or a bright yellow tip on all snorkels, um, but that legislation has, has laxed, so it can have matching colors and it doesn't have to be overly bright. But to help you be better seen in the water, your, uh, your reds, your pinks, your oranges tend to be the most obvious on the surface. So if you really want to be seen, so, so your yellows, your reds, your oranges, and pink is actually surprisingly good. Um, most snorkels are designed to go on your left-hand side of your head. Uh, so you might find that the mouthpiece is angled slightly. Uh, if it feels weird when it's kind of on your right-hand side, then that's why, as a general rule of thumb, if it has any kind of logo or something, that's gonna be on the front, it's not gonna be on the side facing your chin, and it's normally angled so it fits on your left-hand side because our scuba diving regulators come in over the right-hand shoulder. But have fun, uh, spend some time finding the right snorkel for you, and check out today's sponsor, scuba.com. Uh, head over to our website as well, scubadivingmag.com, check out our international scuba diving magazines, subscribe to the channel here on YouTube if you found this useful. Thank you for watching, everybody, and of course, safe diving.